been abducted by Huey and Dewey. Audiences know Bette Midler for playing brash and outrageous in comedies like Ruthless People. My husband worships the ground I walk on! When he hears about this, he will explode! And tugging at heartstrings in dramas like Beaches. I waited for you. I'm here now. And for the stage performances that long ago earned her the moniker, The Divine Miss M. Now Midler is on Broadway, charming audiences in a one-woman show. And she does it without taking a single step. I'm not getting up. <laughs> it's my house, you get up. Usually when you're performing live, you're singing. Is it, is it strange to not be singing? No, it's a relief in a way. I do love my bands and I do love my girls and I love everyone who's on the stage, but I really wanted to do something very, very different. So when this came in, I liked the script immediately. Clients always say, oh, come on, Sue, give it to me straight. Don't sugarcoat it. Jesus, God, not one of them could survive a single phone call that wasn't coated in enough sugar to make Tony the Tiger puke. <laughs> Midler stars in I'll Eat You Last, playing the part of legendary talent agent Sue Mengers, a real-life Hollywood institution who died two years ago at 79. And because I knew her and I, I really adored her, even though I, I'm, not, I'm not so sure she was crazy about me, I liked her. So I thought it was a great idea. A real American story. Yeah, oh Up boy. from your, you know, all those things about, you know, I came from nothing, I was an immigrant, blah, blah. Somebody Fantastic story. And let's face it, if no one's trying to steal your clients, you're doing something wrong. Do you think there are a lot of similarities in, in your personalities? Well, you know, she was a, a kind of tough. She was um, <clears throat> pretty brash. She made herself. She created Sue Mengers. You want to be a thing? Make yourself that thing. In her heyday, Sue Mengers was the ultimate Hollywood insider. She represented Barbara Streisand, Ryan O'Neill, Ally McGraw. Mengers has other clients, Candy Bergen, Tony Perkins. She became so famous, she got the 60 Minutes treatment from none other than Mike Wallace. How do you get clients? I thought you'd never ask. Well, in the beginning, it was through aggression. Now it's through reputation and a little aggression. Hi, Gore. Ten years ago, the 38-year-old lady in that bed was answering telephones for someone else. Back then, Mengers had everyone's ear. Oh, I envy you. My God, I wish I were going. Love to Tatum. Bye. Uh, Jagger on five. Hi, Mick. Will Bianca be there? Mr. Zanuck? Hold on a second, please, Mr. Mengers. Hi, Richard. I just am crazy about that script you sent me. As Mike Wallace explained it... Studio heads, production chiefs, okay. don't turn down Menger's telephone calls, not just because they want her clients, they like to talk to her. They like her gamey humor, the gossip that she trades, her street smarts. It's a side of Menger's that Broadway audiences like, too. That's what we do here. We dish. Who's in, who's out, who's on top? Who's on bottom? Who's on top but really wants to be on the bottom? <laughs> like I always say, if you can't say anything nice about someone, come sit by me! Now, you know, that script that I sent you, the one that you have reservations about. I don't like it. To Robert Evans, Paramount's production chief in the 70s, Sue Mangers was a friend, though he told Wallace she was a tenacious one. Mm -hmm. They say she just refuses to take no for an answer. Three years ago, four years ago, Sue Mengers would call me six times a day and say, Ryan O'Neill for The Godfather? Ryan O'Neill for The Godfather? He'd say, are you crazy, Sue? I mean, Ryan O'Neill's blonde, he's blue-eyed, we want an Italian. They tell me, no. I hear, eh, maybe. <laughs> The next morning, there'd be flowers at the door. Ryan O'Neill for The Godfather. Ryan O'Neill for The Godfather? That, that, that really has to be gall. Well, first of all, I prefer the word chutzpah. When I saw the show, I came out of it liking Sue Mengers. And then I read about her and, and heard that a lot of people hated her. You know, you either loved her or you hated her. And I think there were times when people loved and hated her at the same time. I like you. I'm going to lose three girls a week. I know he's phony.
Barbara Streisand was her biggest client and a close friend. In the play, Sue tells the story of the first time she heard Streisand. And then she sings. After the show, I marched right up to her with all the subtlety of a Panzer Division rolling into Poland. <laughs> You're gonna go the distance, kid. I can see it. The rest of them, these f***ing <laughs> uh, they can't, but I can. And I want to be there. Sue Mingers. It's really kind of a love letter to that relationship. And, you know, it may or may not be true, but this is the theater. It's yeah. drama. The drama unfolding on stage is that Streisand has just fired her. Though Mengers remained a beloved Hollywood figure, she would go on to lose most of her A-list clients. It's a tough old game, Hollywood. Survival of the fittest. Favorite book I never wrote. I'll eat you last. A cannibal a love story. <laughs> But in the play, Bette Midler celebrates what endures. Sue Menger's the indomitable character. The idea of Sue was actually more fabulous than Sue herself. The fact that she could be in this world, this glamorous world, that she could aspire to it, bring it to heel, and then lose everything. I mean, it's just a legend. Do you ever <laughs> pinch yourself and say, who, me? Yeah, a lot. You do? Oh, sure. Sure. And then I say, who deserves it more? <laughs>